that introduction. So basically, um, the topic is finding your niche. And the reason why we decided to go with this is because as most of us probably into journalism or studying journalism, and we're usually advised to find a niche, some, find something you're good at and stick to it. But you've gone beyond that. You've done so many different things. Um, and how were you able to do that and still succeed within the media? I think because I did exactly that. I did something I was good at. And I always say to people, um, you know, you, you, you're, you might be able to do more than one thing, but it's important that you find that thing that you can do at 3 a.m. in the morning. If somebody called you at 3 a.m. in the morning and said, can you do this? Whatever that is that you know you can do with your eyes closed, that is what you do first. So if you want to be a singer, but you know you're great at art, put the microphone down and do art, because that will eventually allow you to sing, believe it or not. It's called a root. And I always say this when I'm doing mentoring and stuff, you know, if you don't have a root, then your tree doesn't grow. Okay, you need a root, and the root is the, that one thing that you can do with your eyes closed. That is the talent that God gave you. Not what you want to do, okay, or what you feel like doing. Well, God's given everyone a talent, I believe, and that is your root. If you're good at that root, it will allow your tree to grow branches. And that is the extra stuff that you feel like doing. And then from the branches, you get leaves, and that's stuff that you don't really care about, but someone's giving it to you, and now you're doing that stuff. So it's always good to have one main focus. Because sometimes I look at Twitter or Instagram and you see people's bios and they tell you all these things that, that they, they, can, they can do and they're known for none of them. Do you know what I mean? And I find be known for one thing and that will allow you to be blessed enough to be able to do different things. So back to myself, my route was comedy. I love football. If you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, I talk more about football than I do anything else. But I was always funny when I was at football. I was always funny in school. You know what I mean? And that is what, that's my natural talent. That has allowed me to become a promoter and do a comedy life. That has allowed me to travel the world. That has allowed me to start writing and doing TV and radio. But none of those things would have happened if I didn't focus on my niche, which was stand up. Right. And going back to the media, um, how diverse do you feel the British media is? Because you've done quite a bit of work in America as well. So in comparison to America, how diverse is the British media? Um, I don't think it's diverse at all, really. I think it's, it is, yes, you need to go to a uni and college and, and get that, that, um, that experience, get that, um, that knowledge um, and, and excel. And I think, especially in media, I think if you do get your study, I think you will be better for it. What that doesn't guarantee, which is the truth, is a job. Because you could have been amazing at uni and college and all that other stuff. But in the real world, people don't care. They want to know, are you good at being creative? I don't believe you need to go to university to be creative. I think you either have creativity in you or you don't. And that's the real world. Do I want somebody that knows everything about beer? Or do I want somebody that's actually tasted it and know the effects? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, that's the real world. That's the truth. So I, I try and always encourage people to don't disregard education because I just think have that for your personal self, for your own personal self-development. But in the real world, be able to deliver something amazing. Be able to add something to what you want to do because that's all people care about. It's, you know, I can say, I, I remember going, um, going out when I was 16, I did, left school and I'm going out and I got my, um, my CV, I was put in all these shops, blah, blah, blah. And then when I actually worked in the shop, I saw what they did with the CVs. <laughs> I was like, what? I saw it, they didn't even look at the CV. They, they liked the look of you, they gave you the job. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the reality. So as much as education is important and creativity, relationships. Mm are very important because sometimes you see somebody who isn't half as good as you getting something but they have an amazing relationship with whoever has given them that job so what you guys have to understand is it's not about being bitter or saying that i'm better than somebody because no one cares it's about 
building relationships because that's kind of another thing that will allow you to grow into this industry. Um, and speaking of relationships, um, Jasmine Dottiwale wrote an article about you and she said that um, your network is your net worth. And so how relevant has that been in your journey towards where you are now? Um, yeah, it comes back to, I guess, um, build, you know, building something. My innocence was literally, when I started doing stand-up, I didn't even know you can get paid. I had no idea. When I got 15 pounds, I found everyone on my phone. I said, bro, I've just got 15 pounds. Right, being is on me. That's your part of the solution. You're not helping in the situation. So, so that, that's been some of my challenges, but those challenges have really made me create because I can confidently say, I don't think there's anyone in this industry like me. And um, being part of the solution is definitely one of the doing your own thing because if we're all doing our own thing who's going to be the one that's going into ITV and and bringing diversity then if we're all doing our own separate thing okay so doing your own thing has to kind of be I mean a lot of people do their own thing my thing I, I you know I feel like sometimes I feel like Kanye West sometimes right <laughs> which is very scary to say <laughs> She's like, yes not a fan now now when I say this I genuinely believe that Kanye West is one of the most intelligent people of our generation. His delivery is awful of how he expresses his point, but that guy is a genius, okay? He really is because he sees so much. One thing as a comedian, I will genuinely go into a scenario and see things that you lot won't see because I've just got that comedy eye, it's like a third eye. Yeah, whereas everyone's maybe at a funeral, I'm seeing something that I shouldn't even be thinking about at a funeral. That's hilarious to me. But that's just my third eye. So in, in terms of the media, I see so much things that are so bad, yeah? That everybody just happy to go along and happy to moan. And I'm like, what? Can't you see this big car crash? That's how I, that's how I see the world. There's a big car crash and people are just having to walk around it. Do you know what I mean? And act like it's not there. And when I see that, I need to, I need to do something about it. Otherwise, I can't go to sleep at night. Literally. Because this, this world isn't fair. It's not fair for women. It's not fair for children sometimes. It's not fair for men. And everybody's happy to just go around and act like things are cool. And, when you are the only person talking like that, you sound crazy. You sound crazy. I saw, um, you know, a Kanye kind West of interview where they were making him out to be crazy, but, you know, if you listen to the guy, what he's saying, he's just saying, all we want is fairness. All we want is fairness. Women want fairness. Men want fairness. You know, religions and race, everybody wants fairness. But we all walk around comfortable, especially in this country, because I, I think in America, it, they only take so much before it kicks off. Do you know what I mean? I think we had a riot, but that unfortunately had nothing to do with what everybody thought it was. You know? Um, you just spiraled out of control and it became about trainers <laughs> and footlockers. The music on the station changed primarily because the artists weren't making R&B and all that stuff no more. Nobody. Grime went missing for about five years. Bashment had its heyday with Beanie Man, Elephant Man, Sean Paul, and all them look coming out. It's all fashion. You know, if, 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 if reggae music comes back with a big bang, they will get a show for it. But it's all about seasons, you know. I remember wearing Jordans when I was in secondary school. I didn't wear them for years, and then it came back. Everything's a cycle, you know. I, my only thing with that is, personally, it was sad because, again, Everybody acts like the world's nice and everyone walks around it and people will Facebook thousands and hundreds of thousands of angry messages but when, they, when, when people came to make a stand outside the station, 12 people turned up. How, you know, people, people aren't angry enough. People aren't upset enough, you know? And, and for me, I feel like that is the reason why they feel they can do these things and they're not going to get no backlash. But do you think it's that people are not angry enough or the fact that 
people have already, they, whoever's on top has already decided what's going to happen. Let me tell you something. I'm, this is from the inside. This is from the inside. When Asian people are upset, <laughs> shit change. <laughs> things happen. Things don't, things stop happening. Sorry, things don't happen no more. That that's because they they do something about it. They show anger. Anger isn't always violence. Anger is stepping up and saying, "I'm not happy about this, and I'm not leaving until there's change." People have to react to that. They have to. They got no choice to react to that. But we don't. We were like, oh yeah, we're going to the march tomorrow. Boy, you know, I've got a babysitter. I can't get a babysitter. <laughs> and that's what we do. We got, we got, we're lined up with excuses. And I feel like that's where we lack it, especially in my black community. I feel like we don't come together for anything that we claim to be upset about. We would chat all day on the phone. Oh my gosh, you're here when they call the station. <laughs> yeah? But we're not going to get up out of our house and go down there and make a stand. Everybody else will. But us. So, unfortunately, they feel comfortable to be able to be like, there you go, that's it. But and also, from the business perspective, having been on the inside, it's like the brand wasn't making money. BBC is um, government radio, so they don't have no adverts, they can talk for 10 minutes and then play a song. Commercial radio is all about adverts. No one gets paid if there's no commercials. So it's about business, and when you listen to Choice, it was Jamaican play, someone selling patty. It was just the adverts weren't um, O2, Nokia, Blackberry. Do you understand? Now there's a shame because you like all of those things.